If you haven't been paying attention to the evolution of Audi Electric, enter the all new 2019 Audi e-tron. Today we're going to walk you through the interior and exterior design language as well as drivetrain and all new technology within the e-tron. Alright, so while we're on the outside of the car, I kind of wanted to talk about the exterior design. There's really two schools of thought when it comes to exterior design for electric cars and I feel like Audi kind of sits in between and it's kind of the best of both worlds. Some manufacturers will exaggerate that look and make it look very futuristic, but whereas Audi has been making cars for several decades now, so they really took a traditional SUV design approach and added some electric car flair to it. The e-tron was built from the ground up to be an all-electric car, so technically this is an all-new platform. Obviously the batteries are low, hidden in between the wheels and the wheelbase of the car, and the length of the car is technically a little bit smaller than the Q7, but it's going to be 193 inches long from front to back. Um, that's going to be about the same size as a BMW X5 or a Lexus RX. Down to the headlight, I want to talk about a lot of the things that Audi has kind of incorporated in here. So, so we've got the uh, LED strip, like most Audis, it's going to have some sort of signature LED strip down here. But all e-trons are going to have these four horizontal strips here. So being able to see these is a surefire way to tell that you're looking at an Audi electric vehicle or an Audi uh, hybrid vehicle. So uh, moving on to the night beams, they're right here. And we've got the high beams kind of to the right of that. And then one more step to the right, you're going to see another little area in there where they house two LEDs. One of them is for the actual fog light. And then the other one is for an actual cornering light too. So rather than the headlights actually swiveling with the car, there's a dedicated bulb in here that only illuminates when you come around a corner. And so also, like I said, there's another bulb in there that actually doubles as a fog light. And so instead of them putting the fog light down here, which means that I have to kind of build the entire lower bumper around that fog light functionality, they actually smooth it all out. And so that adds some aerodynamic function uh, through there, makes it nice and smooth. And then they also have this functional air scoop that actually feeds air to the brakes to cool them off if they're hot. So that adds a nice, very aesthetically pleasing front end. Uh, it's definitely very electric looking. And uh, like I said, the, all, the, all the headlights nowadays are all LED, so they don't need to have them in their own entire housing. So then moving on to the grill, you'll notice that in electric car, uh, typical fashion here, we've got all the grills kind of blocked off because it doesn't need all that area like a normal internal combustion car would. It actually has just this sliver of opening here and that does offer, offer some uh, cooling for the, uh, for the batteries. And then moving down here, you've got a lip spoiler. And then in here, you see that little black lens right there. And that black uh, sensor is actually gonna give you a lot of the functionality for your safety systems like Audi PreSense, emergency braking, uh, your adaptive uh, cruise control, your active lane keep assist. Um, quite a few things are actually gonna come from that little lens. And, uh, tandem with the uh, camera that's also mounted in the windshield over here too. So moving over to the uh, other headlight, uh, I've got the blinker turned on. I want to be able to show you, obviously, like I said, everything's all LED now. So we've got the actual blinker that's a dynamic LED turn signal too. So it's going to illuminate and it's also going to send the light down here in like a descending manner to kind of give you some contrast with the front end. It gives a lot of really nice looking detail. So coming around the back, the rear end does something very similar, except for it's a little bit more uh, precise looking. Moving on to the taillights now, I wanted to show some similarities between the headlights and taillights. So actually, in typical Audi e-tron and electric vehicles fashion, you're going to have these horizontal stripes that run uh, when the taillights are on. And then also, kind of harkening back to the original Audi Quattro back in rally days, uh, we've got this fully illuminated light bar that kind of runs the width of the car connecting the two taillights. Uh, it's really pretty. Uh, also, I just kind of want to talk about the uh, the body lines on the e-tron. So, like I said, it's kind of more of a traditional SUV design, but we've got these really purposeful haunches here on the rear end. There's beautiful body lines throughout. Uh, it's very conservatively styled. It's going to age really well, the styling. But uh, at the same time, it does look very uh, electric vehicle. Like, the wheels look very uh, futuristic. Uh, we've got this breather down on the side that kind of draws some more attention to the fact it's an electric car. And then moving to the back, obviously, uh, everyone's used to cars kind of having uh, tailpipes. Obviously, since it's an electric car, it doesn't have any tailpipes, so they just added a little bit of uh, 
balance uh, functionality through there for the aerodynamic. Moving right along to the part of the e-tron that really separates it from most of its competitors, obviously, is the fact that it does not have a gas tank, it does not run on fuel. What it does instead is has batteries, and this is how you refill the batteries. So when you open up this little door here, you see the uh, Audi Electrify America charging here. So this car can also take uh, the normal chargers that you see around, and it also can take uh, Electrify America, which is what the Volkswagen Audi group are popping up all around the states. We're going to have about uh, 2,000 locations uh, throughout the United States by the end of 2019. So you're going to have plenty of uh, stops to be able to really accommodate any type of trip that you may have uh, and so uh, whenever you are charging the e-tron you basically have about nine hours of uh, charge time for a full uh, charge if you're charging from the 220 at your house uh, which is also the uh, the cord that they give you here in the front uh, area of the trunk here I'll show you that here in a second and then if you're charging at a fast station you've got a couple options so you should be able to charge up to 80% capacity in about half an hour and then also you should be able to get about 54 miles of range in about 10 minutes so if you only have a little bit farther to go you just want to stop for a coffee just stretch your legs charge it up for about 10 minutes and you're gonna have about 54 miles of range which is really nice uh, also I want to talk about the fact that the battery uh, warranty is going to be about eight years 150 or 100,000 miles excuse me and then the uh, regular bumper to bumper is four-year 50,000 and then also during the four-year 50 you're going to have free roadside assistance so if you have uh, a flat tire or you lock your keys in your car somehow or you do run out of charge you're going to have uh, Audi be able to come to the rescue there 24 7 for that entire warranty period and you'll be covered so moving along to the front of the car here Obviously, since it's an electric car, it does not have an engine up here. What it rather has is a whole bunch of battery things, but it does have a small front trunk for you to be able to keep your um, your electric charge things here. So this is what you'll use in order to uh, install into your house there so that you can have the, uh, the 220 volts uh, capacity there to be able to charge the car. And this one I was talking about, if you use this, takes about nine hours for a full charge. Uh, so. Uh, you know, obviously you get home at night from work, you just plug it up and it'll be more than ready to go by the time you leave the next morning, you have a full charge. But obviously 98% of the driving that we do is within a 60, 60 mile round trip of our house every day, so you should be good for quite a few days on that, you won't even have to charge it every night. Looking at the wheel here, on this specific model we've got 21 inch wheels that come standard on the Prestige model. But uh, I really wanted to draw your attention to the brakes. So the e-tron is obviously a very heavy car, weighs a little over 5,000 pounds. But the best thing about these brakes is that not only is the car equipped with regenerative braking capabilities, but it also has really giant calipers in here. So you can barely see it behind the wheel, but you've got one of the biggest calipers that comes stock on a, on a production vehicle here. It is a six piston caliper with 15 inch rotors and they're like really really big so that lends to a lot of stopping power whenever you're uh, you know hauling this big boy down from however fast you've been going so on top of that the car is going to recoup a lot of the energy that you've wasted with the uh, acceleration so we've got the paddle shifters in the car they're going to allow you to uh, control the uh, the how aggressively the car recoups uh, the braking and so a lot of the times uh, if you need to brake any more than three tenths of a G, any heavier than that, you'll want to use the brake pedal, but a lot of the time, you're just going to simply be able to lift your foot off of the gas pedal and then just use the car's regen braking to come to a stop for normal in-town driving and things like that. All right, so I wanted to show you a couple things about the rear end of the e-tron. Uh, I've actually got the key in my pocket, so like all Audis, it has smart key, and it has kick-to-release trunk, so if there's no t trailer hitch installed in the car, key in your purse, uh, in your pocket, you should be able to kick and uh, the trunk should open just like that, uh, slightly left of center, and that should uh, read your foot pretty well. So moving back here, obviously since it's uh, got all the batteries low down and evenly between the wheels and the chassis, you've got a nice beautiful flat loading bay, there's no drivetrain intrusions here. We've got uh, 27 and a half cubic cargo feet of space with, this, with the seats uh, folded up, and then if you have the seats folded down flat, it's got about 57 uh, cubic feet. So it's uh, on par with everything else in its class, uh, gas or electric. And uh, also wanted to talk about the fact that you can release the seats to fold flat from back here too. So there's the 60-40 split. Uh, and once they're completely flat, obviously, you've got a lot of space back here. We can put doggos, we can put skis and surfboards. We can put a lot of things back here. 
Uh, we've got the kick to release trunk. Again, should be able to close it. Yep, it'll beep you to kind of let you know to get out of the way so it doesn't smack you in the head. And uh, it's closed all good. And then also, if you did happen to have a trailer hitch installed, you should know you can tow about 4,000 pounds with the e-tron. Uh, and uh, it shouldn't ever, shouldn't really put too much intrusion on your, uh, on your, your not gas mileage, but your range, I should say, uh, whenever you're pulling something as well. So moving along to the inside of the car, I really wanted to draw your attention to a couple different things that Audi is doing a little bit differently with the e-tron. So starting here with the shifter, this is actually kind of an evolution of current Audi shifters right now, but there is no transmission in the e-tron. So you're actually just going to see this little clicker right here, and instead of you having an actual movable shifting, you're going to be able to just simply click down for drive or sport, and then to be able to put it in reverse, it's two clicks forward. And then you're going to get used to this, but then the park button is right there on the side. So whenever you get to a stop, you'll just go ahead and push that button and it's immediately going to put it in park. So also, looking down here in the center console area, you're going to have a giant like storage area space, but you're also not going to see any cup holders. And it's like, where are my cup holders? Well, they're actually right here. So you just literally use your thumb to release the clip and then you'll see them kind of appear down there. And obviously it's adjustable for the size and things. You're going to have two of those if you want them. And then when you don't have any cups in there and they're not in use, you can just pull them away. And it's going to be a nice little storage area that you can close and open and things like that. And then also over here to save space and to make it a little bit more safer doing a crash, your phone charger is going to be down here. So for an iPhone 8 or newer or a Samsung Galaxy, you're going to be able to do wireless charging. And so instead of it laying flat against the console there, you're just going to put it and slide it right in between there and the, and the hook. And that hook is going to keep it still, keep it charging. And also, if you have any type of emergency maneuver or things like that, it's going to keep your phone still, which is kind of cool. So then moving up here to the top screen, I'm going to show you a couple things about the infotainment system here. So this is Audi's first take on a touchscreen system. And in my opinion, it actually did a really good job. So you're going to see all your main tabs here. It's really self-explanatory, easy to use. And you're going to see down here, a big thing about the new system is Apple CarPlay. And so Apple CarPlay is best used with a touchscreen system. So you're going to be able to see all your apps just like that. And uh, you're going to be able to use Siri for your voice command, for text messages, phones, uh, taking you to a specific address. It'll even let you use uh, third-party apps like Waze or Google Maps. So moving back out to the Audi system here, you're going to have their own tab for radio, media, phone, navigation, uh, vehicle settings, things like that. So the system itself is actually very responsive. So the screen is very easy. It's a haptic response system. So even when you're driving, it's very easy to use. And you know when you hit the button and it's received your input. So you're going to be able to see a whole bunch of settings here. Let's go back out to the main menu. We'll see our radio. You're going to be able to scroll through. This is really easy to do while you're driving. But just in case you want to have one more level of security, you're actually able to do a lot of this from the steering wheel here. So the rule of thumb is with Audis is that the left side of the steering wheel will control this screen. And so you'll be able to use these right and left horizontal arrows to row through four tabs at the top of the screen. So here we're in the car tab. This is the radio and media tab. This is your cell phone Bluetooth tab. And you've got your uh, map tab here. And so this button right here that says view on it, it's going to have one purpose. And that's to make the tack and speedometer bigger and smaller. So in order to have a little bit more information at your fingertips here, you can push that view button and make the uh, tack and speedometer smaller so that you can have a little bit more information uh, and it's easy to use. So like I was talking about from the main screen, you're actually able to use the radio and your media from this screen right here. So you can change radio stations and go to your presets and, and change whether you're listening to your Bluetooth streaming audio or the radio here. You can do that all from the touch of your thumb here on the steering wheel. All right, so moving along, there's a couple more things that the e-tron will allow you to do. It's going to allow you to rearrange the uh, displays that you see on the virtual cockpit. So we're going to go to settings, go to virtual cockpit, and you'll see on here it gives you three uh, different settings for which of the, how the information is displayed on the car. So you're going to see the classic, which is what we've got up here right now. You've got your RPMs or, or the percentage of battery that you're using here in the e-tron and then your miles per hour over here. But my favorite is got to be the e-tron configuration, which is really futuristic looking. So it's going to put your miles per hour in the center here, and then it's going to have your, your energy consumption here on the left as like a, uh, as like a linear gauge. And then over here, you're going to have um, how much of the, uh, 
the range you have left. So the view button is simply going to change that from a right to left, and it's going to separate a little bit. Thus, is to give you that uh, that that variability for the information that you want to see, and then you can put it back to the center here. New on the e-tron, and actually this is going to be on pretty much all Audis from the 2019 model year on. You're going to have a user profile. So this year we'll take the owner and let them choose from up to six profiles and a user and a guest profile and you're going to be able to store everything from your radio presets to navigation address history to the position of your steering wheel and seats it's all going to be able to be saved into your profile and obviously you'll be able to rename that and make it your name uh, let's go in here i'm going to rename mine lee because that's my name <laughs> Thank you. So over here, I have just bought the e-tron and I really just want to save all my safety preferences up to there. I'm going to uh, readjust my seat and steering wheel and things like that. Uh, now, I really just wanted to talk about the uh, driver assistance systems that are going to come standard on the e-tron. So this button down here is going to give you the adjustability for your, for your driver assistance settings. So when you push that, it's going to let you toggle through these three settings and you'll see these. So maximum means it's going to turn on all the driver assistance systems on high alert, if you will, their most intrusive setting. And then basic, by contrast, is going to turn them all on their lowest and least intrusive setting. And then individual is where you can go and customize what you want to be on high alert and what you want to be on low alert. So we're going to go in here and look at the customization of, of this real quick. So speed warning, this is just a, a non-intrusive system that can really just warn you when you go over a certain speed. Uh, it's not going to break for you. It's a passive safety tech, so it's not going to actually break for you. It's just going to give you a ding uh, to let you know that you've exceeded that speed limit that you uh, wanted to set. And then this one down here is a new thing on the e-tron too. Because of the fact that the car knows what the speed limit is, um, you can actually have it warn you when you go over, over a certain amount over the speed limit. So if you want it to warn you when you go over 10 miles an hour over the speed limit, you can just leave it there and the car will uh, just softly ding at you to let you know that you've kind of exceeded that speed limit. So moving back out here, Adaptive Cruise Assist. So this is talking about uh, the, the cruise assist where basically the car will maintain a certain distance from the car in front of you whenever you're on the highway. So if you've set your cruise at 70 and you come up on a car that's doing 65, the car is gonna automatically slow you down to where you don't uh, come up on them any closer than a set distance. So store last distance, we'll turn that on. That's basically just gonna remember the last distance that you had set from the time that you used the cruise before. And then distance warning, this is talking about your tailgating, for instance. So if you have the habit of riding people's tail too close when you're on the phone or anything like that, if you're, you know, distracted, we can have the e-tron actually warn you whenever you get a one to three seconds uh, a car lengths away from the, uh, from the car in front of you. So that's another thing you can do. Uh, Presense here, this is another thing that's standard on the e-tron. This is talking about how early or late the car will intervene and uh, break for you if it sees an imminent uh, collision for uh, the front end. So if uh, the car senses you closing in a gap between you and the car in front of you too quickly, it will give you an audible and visual warning on the dash saying you need to pay attention, uh, the, the car is about to, you know, you're about to hit someone else. And if you still don't intervene at that point, it's gonna actually break for you. And then, like I said, this is just talking about how early or late it intervenes. Most people uh, have no problems leaving on the medium setting. That's going to be uh, like the perfect uh, setting for the least intrusive and, and also the most practical. And then turn assist here, we always leave that on. This is talking about if you're um, like at an intersection where you're yielding left at a green light and uh, you don't have an arrow, but you've got cars coming this way. And uh, let's just say that you, for some reason, didn't see the cars coming this way and you're about to turn right in front of them. Uh, it's actually gonna notice that car there. And as you start to turn and gas it up into the intersection where you're about to turn right in front of that car, the e-tron will stop you and not let you enter the intersection at that point. So it'll keep you from having that collision. So moving back down here. All right, so moving down to side assist. So this is just talking about the black lenses and the mirror housings there they can, uh, we can adjust the brightness of them. So that's just gonna glow a soft yellow like that in the mirror housing whenever someone is in your blind spot. So you just know not to get over if that is glowing the gentle yellow that it does there. So moving down to the lane departure warning, this is just gives you the, uh, the, the customization of being able to have the vibration on the steering wheel. Uh, if you veer out of lane, you can turn that on or off. It's a very subtle, uh, just attention grabbing vibration for the steering wheel if you start to veer out of lane.
I really wanted to show you guys the, uh, when you put the car in reverse, obviously, it's going to put on your rear view camera automatically. So another way to go ahead and engage that button is even after you put it in park, you're going to be able to use this button right here to be able to turn on the system. And so if I've turned it on, you'll notice down here I can push this little tab and it's going to give me eight different, or sorry, seven different views for the cameras that I can choose. So we've got front wide angle, front regular, then you've got a magnified view of your top view, and then we've got your rear regular angle, your rear wide, and we've got a view of your front tires and then your rear tires. So there's tons of different cameras on the car and together they produce a really beautiful picture of the top view together and then you can break them down individually and you can see very precise areas of the car as well. So moving over to something that's new for Audi is a 3D camera. So this is really good, let's say if you're backing out of a driveway and there's like a little dog you can't see from where you're sitting in the driver's seat, but this is in real time. So as that dog or a cat or even child, you know, is like moving around uh, while you're backing out, you can see them in real time as where they are. So this camera will stay displayed up to six miles an hour. So if I'm backing up here, it actually shows me what direction my wheels are pointed in, that my reverse lights are on, and it's going to show me a very precise picture of the car as it moves through uh, any type of obstacle you have. And so if you have a dog or a cat or something that's moving around, it's going to show you in real time where they are so you can actively make sure you don't hit anyone. So that's a really cool thing. So moving on to the back seat here, I just wanted to talk about some of the room and some of the features. So I have the seat, the driver's seat, in my driving position. I'm about 5'10", and so I've climbed into the back seat here. And as you can see, I'm sitting upright. I'm very comfortable. I've got plenty of leg room. Uh, so even if someone of, of taller stature was up there driving, I'd still have plenty of room here. So I've also got, you know, optional ventilated seats, heated seats. They're very comfortable. I've got plenty of climate control uh, controls back here so I can be able to control my own temperature. And then the leather is obviously very beautiful. So I've got this uh, comes down for a cup holder. And uh, I've got this and it opens up. Give me some cup holders here. It's some doubles and armrests and a storage area. Uh, also, there's a pass-through through there. So if you have something like a little bit longer of an item, you can actually use that as a pass-through uh, to store that in the car. Um, also over here, I've got uh, like a liter of water here. All the doors, including the front two, have a large door bin. I'm able to store things pretty easily down there. So for larger cups, water bottles, things like that, you can store pretty easily. Uh, the beautiful ambient lights uh, from the front stretch into the back seat. Uh, same thing for the beautiful speakers of that Bang & Olufsen sound system. we got 16 speakers, 705 watts on a 15 channel system. So the sound system in this car is second to none. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, also with the optional warm weather package, I've got uh, sun shades back here to keep me cool. It's very nice and isolated. I feel very comfortable. Uh, I can relax here. Uh, definitely a look good long distance cruiser if you needed to. I even got charging ports for my mobile devices. Uh, and then of course the e-tron also has Wi-Fi in the car too. So I am completely set. So e-tron first and foremost is an Audi. It was built from the ground up to be an electric car. But at the end of the day, things that are important to Audi as a car manufacturer as a whole, whether it be an internal combustion car or an electric car is luxury and the quality feel. So obviously Audi's been building cars for decades now, so their interior quality is second to none. And the interior design is also very beautiful and elegant. So as an electric car, this isn't their first step. They've actually been doing this for a long time. So they're able to take all the knowledge that they gathered, you know, building cars for the past several decades and be able to take all that knowledge and put it into this electric car. So the car is very solidly built on the interior. There's use of a lot of soft uh, plastics, a lot of leather, a lot of beautiful stitching and seams, and the, the infotainment system is beautifully done. Uh, you've got the sound deadening that you expect from a brand like this. It's a very luxurious and it's luxurious and supple ride. Uh, a lot of something that's really nice in the e-tron is you have, you know, in the luxury package, you've got available massage seats, which are so nice. I'm using them right now. Uh, they give you, like, it breaks out the monotony of a long drive really well by kind of just making you feel uh, very good uh, and not making you really feel like the seat is uncomfortable at any point. One thing that I really did want to talk about is the thickness of the glass. And that's important because of sound deadening. So the e-tron at, it's at about 80 miles an hour is much quieter than its competitors because of the fact that it's a very solidly built car and 
it's all got dual pane acoustic glass in the front windows and in the windshield. Um, so that really lends to a very luxurious feel when you're inside the car as well. Top speed of the e-tron is 124 miles an hour and it will sail up to that speed very easily because it's electronically limited. But also at that speed it's worth noting that the drag coefficient of the e-tron is also the lowest in its class at 0.28 which means this car is uh, extremely efficient going through the air. All right, Abby, so as a courtesy, I'm just going to let you know right now I'm about to put the car in dynamic mode. And when that happens, that's right, put your seatbelt on. When that happens, the car will lower a couple inches, there, thus to kind of give you a little bit lower ride height to lend to more road feel and uh, stability at high speed. And so we're going to put it in launch control mode here, and we're going to do a launch. So because of the car, because of the fact the car is four-wheel drive, it doesn't have any slippage at the wheels. It's completely just drama-free acceleration, which is really nice. So I'm about to do it. All right, let's get it going. Ooh, that'll... Oh, it's... Ow! <laughs> okay! Jeez! <laughs> Gonna get a ticket in Highland Park. That was just lovely right there. That was actually really not bad at all. And then if I want to be just like, oh, let's fix the environment, just... Use those regen brakes all the way back down to zero. Let's do it one more time. All right, so we've just put the car in dynamic mode. We're going to do a launch here. Abby has put her seatbelt on. So here we go. Oh, look at Watch out, squirrel. <laughs> that was really fast. Okay, I feel like that was, that was a really good little acceleration run. I feel like I've made a believer out of Abby as well. So the e-tron is fast, you guys. This is the ultimate sleeper. You can just be at a red light and then some young guy in his Mustang GT comes up. He's like, I don't know why he would be like that, but he's like, do you want to race? And you'll be like, sure. And then you just smoke him. So that's super fun. Yay, e-tron. Checked another one of my boxes. Did you know that e-tron can tow up to 4,000 pounds? I did know it. Now you do. <laughs> Do you want to know what its starting price is? Yes, I do. It's seventy-four eight, which is right, right on the money for electric vehicles. Also, do you want to know what its warranty is for I the batteries? I would love to. That is eight years or a hundred thousand miles. That is fantastic. Whichever comes first. More details at your Audi dealership. <laughs> at your local Audi dealership. I swear, we've been driving around like forever today and I've only used five miles of range because I just I just keep using the regen braking and it's like not even put a dent in the power. I'm putting back so much of the power back into the battery. That is so cool. I forgot to mention that the e-tron literally has this ionizer in the air conditioning. So you can push a button down here on the climate control setting and you can literally tell it what fragrance you want to smell while you're in the car getting the air conditioning. So you can put it on like summer or like winter. I don't really know what summer or winter smells like, but you can choose one of those two settings. And also there's an ionizer in here just to go a step further in the name of luxury. Thanks for watching this comprehensive review. Don't forget to swing by Audi Dallas and check out the all new 2019 Audi e-tron.